Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to show you how to determine what kind of chip is inside a source uh, fob or access badge or card that you want to possibly clone to an implant. To do that, we're going to be using the Proxmark 3 Easy. And I want to show you first about the antenna structures on the Proxmark, because that's going to be important. So if you're unsure what kind of um, you know, chip frequency is being used in a fob, you might have to try a couple places. So this right here, this red ring, that is the low frequency antenna. It even says so right, right there, uh, center frequency 125 kilohertz. This area that looks like a card with the little flashies there, that is the high frequency antenna area, but it is not the high frequency antenna. The actual high frequency antenna is on the bottom PCB basically under this and you can kind of see it if you look between this these layers now the proxmark 3 easy is constructed with three pcbs the top one being the low frequency antenna there's a middle board here and then there's the main board here that everything plugs into for some reason this middle board is included but it's actually not necessary that does nothing uh, the only thing it really does is raise this lf antenna up off the main board uh, but what you can do is actually remove these screws and remove these nuts and basically take this board out and lower this LF antenna down a notch. And then you'll see uh, basically on top of this PCB, there is, uh, you know, on top of this bottom PCB, there are traces for the HF antenna. So if you're trying to scan something that is, say, like an implant or something very small, you probably are going to want to put it on the bottom side of, of the PCB here to get a better read than try it on top of this, you know, center PCB. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, open up the Proxspace, uh, Proxmark client. So uh, to get Proxspace running, we're going to do run me 64. That's going to load up the Proxspace environment so that we can use these Linux tools in a Windows environment. Then we're going to go to the Proxmark 3 folder, the client folder, and we're going to say dot slash because you need to specify uh, I want to run Proxmark 3 client in that directory. So now we have the client running and we're in the Proxmark um, client environment now. So there's a couple commands that you can do uh, that you can use. One is just auto. So if you type auto and hit enter, it's going to search for all LF tags and then all HF tags. Um, so we're going to put that one because I really actually don't know what that is. So we're going to hit auto and you can see the first thing it does is LF search. That's the low frequency search and it found something. So it didn't move on. So this is an EM4102 uh, type emulator. I'm just curious. I'm going to see if there is actually a T55 in there and there is. So this key fob is not actually an EM4102. It is a T5577 chip that can uh, be rewritten to some other, uh, you know, low frequency ID. So that's kind of funny. And you'll see this actually more often now because, you know, when you're, when you're making these types of, um, you know, they're making these types of products, uh, what will happen is uh, you, you're going to make a, uh, you know, access control and you have, you know, you got to buy these low frequency chips, EM4102s, uh, or whatever. And then you might have like another different type of access control or reader or something where you're going to provide a different thing, like maybe an AWID or an HID prox or something. So the companies now are starting to get wise to this T5577 chip and they just supply that. They don't bother with buying in different SKUs and different chips and then making different um, things out of each one of those. They just buy the T5577, make one thing, and then program it as needed when they need more inventory of that particular thing. So you're gonna see these T5577s floating around as legitimate fobs more and more. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and try this one. I'm pretty sure that's low frequency. So instead of auto, I'm just gonna do the LF search because I know pretty much that is low frequency. So I do that and sure enough, it comes up with another EM ID, but uh, I'm curious again, is this, um, this is a T5577? No, it's not. So that that is a fob that uses a legit chip and it's not changeable. Uh, but let's say you have something like this. I went to VMworld in 2007. Uh, I was director of IT for Outback Power Systems at the time. I don't remember. I remember there's something in here, but I don't remember what it is. So because it's a card format, and I'm going to assume that there's, um, you know, basically a, a decent card size antenna, I'm going to try to just lay it over both and see if that works. I'm going to hit auto. 
Looking for LF, didn't find anything. Looking for HF, and yes, it did find an HF tag. It looks like a classic 1K MyFair chip, which is, you know, legacy chip style, uh, chip type. And um, so what's interesting is this um, this MyFair Classic 1K is one of the types of high-frequency devices that can be cloned to a chip implant because we have the XM1 and the Flex M1. Uh, those both use a magic MyFair uh, you know, 1K chip. That's magic. It means that it can be changed. So the legitimate MyFair chips from NXP, they have a uh, read-only UID or serial number. They cannot be changed. But the magic version of that chip, um, it's a little bit gray area. It comes out of China, you know. But basically, it's allowing you to make make those changes. So you can take this card, you can copy the ID to uh, to a chip implant. You can actually. Um, it, because of the security is very poor on the MyFair Classic 1K, you can also break the security if it has any data that's hidden or stored behind access keys. You can break those keys and then get all the information out of it and the keys, copy all of that to the XM1 or FlexM1, and then have a perfect clone, a copy of this uh, transponder, this tag or badge or card. So that's basically how you do it. Um, next, we're going to talk about actually doing these types of clones uh, for LF and for HF.